Hello, Robert Kiyosaki, The Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And today, a very, very important show. I mean, talk about macro and micro show. Uh, <clears throat> this is the end of May 2023, starting of June 2023. Uh, they're in a debt crisis. They're trying to extend the debt rather than reduce the debt. And this place is a mess here. So it's a, it's a huge problem, and, and this started approximately 1971 when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard and they could print as much money as they like. So today, money is debt. The only way money comes into existence, we have to borrow it. So I'm not against, you know, it's a lot of guys like Dave Ramsey are against borrowing money. I'm not against borrowing money. But when you borrow money, you can't pay it back. You have a problem. And that's what's happening here, our national debt is through the F and roof right now, and it's going to increase and increase and increase, especially with baby boomers, retire, Social Security, Medicare, and a lot of the boomers' retirements are being wiped out as they raise interest rates. So this is a major problem. But today we're going to focus on another big, big problem is our student loan debt crisis. So our guest today is Lane Schoenberger, He's the Chief Investment Officer of Y Refi, and his specialty is debt. And I'm honored to meet him. I met a CFO the other night, and she was telling us what, what Lane and their company is doing to somehow give a break to these kids. I mean, they're kids. You got 18 years old, you sign up for a $50,000 loan. You can't even drink in some states at 18 years old, but you get a $50,000 loan. You can't get a driver's license with 50, you can't get a credit card with a $50,000 loan. And again, Obama's fingerprints are all over this. I'm not Republican or Democrat. I'm just calling as I see it. You can tell a person by what they do, not what they say. Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. And, and everything you just said is absolutely spot on. Um, thank you. you know, it's, a lot of people don't know what happened behind the scenes. And I'll just share this really quickly is, you know, my, my partner, who's the CEO of this company, had a phenomenal student loan company back in the, uh, I'm going to say in the way back machine. Uh, it's how I met him in the, in the 90s into the early 2000s. And uh, they, were, they were doing, uh, creating student loans for these kids through the federal government and private schools. Everything was going great. And there was a thing called a public-private partnership, talking about capitalism right here, right? He had a, pr a public-private partnership, and it allowed him to, to create programs for these young people to get education financing. And he came up with some very unique and, and interesting things to allow the borrower to take out appropriate student loans, because back then it was a bit more monitored and managed. And uh, at the end of the day, in 2008, uh, nine, right in that range, 2010, under Obama, the public-private partnership ended, and they brought all lending back into the Department of Education at that point in time. Okay. Robert, here's the thing. At that point in time, the total student loan debt that was owed across this country, both federal and private, was $685 billion. Okay, that was in, that was in, uh, in, in about 2008, nine. As of today, we are eclipsing $1.8 trillion. This is what the government does. They get involved and they just print money and it caused college cost inflation to go up by 10% a year and it has not slid off at all. Now you add in a normal inflation, you know, that we've got, this is not normal, add in non-college inflation and, and it's becoming impossible to get an education that you can actually afford. Right, and that's why I call them Marxists because they make us poorer and poorer and poorer via the government. I agree. <clears throat> and that's what's really, really tragic. <clears throat> On top of that, the old guys, my generation, you know, when they raised the interest rates, our 401ks got totaled. Right. <clears throat> the bonds got totaled, big banks started collapsing all around us. And now the younger generation is faced with a student loan debt that they can't pay off. So uh, I appreciate your humanitarian efforts there because <clears throat> you're, you're in the refi business, but you're also concerned about how we're going to repay. How, how do you get a student out of this mess is the question. Is that what you guys do? That's what we do. Um, you know, and, and first thing is, is to break it down so, you, so people understand the, the, the magnitude of it. So you've got about $1.8 Call it $1.5 is federal student loan debt. 
Okay. And we don't do anything on the federal student loan debt side because that's all government. And as you can imagine, there's no real opportunities to do anything to help people that are in, in that situation. Then on the private side, you've got the private education lenders, and these are going to be your private uh, banks, uh, that, believe it or not, Navient, Sally Mae, companies that you would typically associate with federal money. They actually have a private uh, lending arm as well. So there's, there's money being lent to these kids to go to school. And when you, when you break it down, we only focus on the private student loans that are in distress. These are borrowers that have defaulted on their student loans. Okay. Now in 2017, our market verifiable was a $21 billion market, which is just absurd. Okay. Bar that's, that's, that's about 10% of the total portfolio was in default at that point in time with inflation and the adjustments that they're making to the, uh, uh, to the interest rates, all of a sudden we've got borrowers who are falling into distress at a, at a record we've never seen before. Our market as of right now is over $45 billion. And that's Holy all man. happened. Yeah. And that's all happened in the last 12 months. It's doubled. It's doubled in the last 12 months. And here's why borrowers that have ver uh, private student loans, almost all of them are variable interest rate loans. So they're just getting crushed. So then when they raise interest rates, when the Fed raises interest rates, whoever, whoever does that stuff, the student loan debt goes up. Now, once again, so if they have a federal loan, you can't help them. But if they're private, you guys are available. Correct. See, the federal government will not work with us. And, you know, there's all these conversations about student loan forgiveness. Okay. And now... This, this is a very interesting conversation because when we're talking about what we do here at Y-Refi, we don't deal with any federal student loans, only private. And that takes the conversation about student loan forgiveness and it, it removes it from this conversation because the federal government cannot forgive private loans. It's not their money to forgive. Now, one could argue that the other money is not theirs to forgive either, but that's, <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation, right? In this example, um, you know, and, and it's very difficult and it's really got a lot of borrowers very confused because in the conversation, they generally don't delineate your federal versus your private student loans when they're having this conversation about forgiveness. And it creates confusion amongst the borrowers. Well, what is, what isn't, right? Uh, then they had this whole forbearance thing for the federal government for through COVID. And during that time frame, it was a case of, uh, well, do I have to continue to pay on my private student loans? My federal ones have been in forbearance and now we're coming three years. These things have been in forbearance and now all of a sudden they're going to come out of forbearance. What, what, is, what does forbearance mean? For, in, in the federal government's world, what they did when COVID started was they said, okay, if you have a federal student loan, you have a 0% interest rate, no payments are due. We don't want your money right now. We're just going to freeze everything in time right now. Well, that was right after COVID started. And it's still, they keep kicking the can down the road um, and it's political. I'm not going to lie. Everybody knows that it's political. And, and the idea behind it is, is to get the votes, right? It's all about, oh, we're going to push it, right? And, and every time they push it out just a little bit further, the situation continues to get worse and worse for the, for the borrowers. Can I ask a step back a little bit? Please. I don't know much about it. I just know that from my friends, I, I'm personally 1.2 billion in debt, but it's good debt. You know, I own a lot of no commercial buildings. Sure. A lot of apartment houses. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's where our money is and they all, they all cash flow positive and all this, but I learned how to use debt. And for my friends who are good at debt, they said they would never touch a student loan. They said that's the most horrible loan they'd ever seen before. Right. So can you shed any light on from a guy like me who borrows money to get rich? versus a student loan person who can't get out of the debt because the, the loan is so poorly structured or onerous. What is the difference there, Lane? Well, the difference is, is you know, when, the, when, when kids go through high school, the first stop when they hit college is the financial aid office, right? And right. if they don't have a scholarship or grants, the next thing is, here, fill out this application for free federal student aid, the FAFSA application. Well, the government doesn't pay the entire bill of your education. It's based on a bunch of variables, including your income, your parents' income, the degree, the college, and so forth. It's never enough. 
Now the borrower has to be introduced to the private lenders, okay, to cover the cost of that education. But no one ever really sits down and explains to that borrower, hey, <laughs> here's the situation. And then what happens is you got college costs going up. Kids are getting these degrees and things that frankly can't support the level of borrowing that they took out, right? So you've got a kid that goes and gets a major in underwater basket weaving or whatever, comes out and then discovers they actually have to start at the bottom of the ladder and work their way up. <laughs> or maybe they had a delay in getting their job or whatever the story and they owe a hundred thousand dollars in student loans and they're making 50, 60,000 bucks a year to start. And it's just not enough to service the debt and they find themselves in distress and beginning here comes why refi, right? Cause until now, keep in mind, Robert, all student loans, federal and private are what they call bankruptcy protected. There's a thing called the Bruner test and it's very difficult to go through bankruptcy and actually get these things forgiven through bankruptcy. So right. these are, that's so that's and that's the point everybody's getting at. Right. Like I can I can declare bankruptcy and get out. You could. And what do you but, lose? You give up your apartment building. Right. right. They just take my apartment building. Right. And in a student but, loan, you just always it forever. Oh, always geez. forever. And they ruin your credit and they put you into collections and you know uh, they'll actually go in through a judgment and get a garnishment against your wages. And this this can literally follow you the rest of your life. And when you die, it goes to your estate. So these are, it is not good debt. No kidding. It's a necessary evil to go to school in most cases, if mom and dad don't have the money to pay for it, if you haven't gotten the money and you're not able to work and do the thing. So there's a, there's a place for student lending. Jeez. The problem is that it's out of control, just like you and, said. And once again, they pick on the poor people. Yep. They're the ones that are affected most. Because most of my friends, they just pay for their kids' education. That's right. But if you're poor, you have to go through student loans. Right. And you can't forgive it. Is that basically maybe it's my language? I I you can you can take my apartment house, it's all yours. But if I have a student loan, I cannot do that. It's not forgiven at all. Well, that's the whole com controversy right now on the federal side is let's forgive the student loan debt and move forward. Well, private ed, uh, institutions are not going to forgive student loan debt. That's investor money going through banks and lending institutions. They're not going to forgive anything. They're going to pursue these borrowers all the way through garnishment. If need be, well, you that so that was so when this guy, guy Obama again, I'm not Republican or Democrat, Trump is my friend, but when I started to understand what he was doing with the student loan debt going up, government, I went something's up here. Right. We come back when we're going into what what um, why refi is doing and all this, and how there's an opportunity for investors to support younger people of getting out one of the most hideous parts of your life. Is debt that you can't use anymore. I mean, it's dead money. You know, once you've spent that money on that college education, there's no income from it. <laughs> like I have an apartment house. I got income from it and I get some tax breaks and all that. Right. But I get nothing from a student loan. So we come back, we'll go into more with Lane Schoenberger. Very important subject, especially at the time of the world economy right now. Debt is killing us. We'll be right back. Robert already warned us, 2023 is going to be the year of lost wealth. After all, Goldman Sachs predicts you'll see zero returns from stocks for the rest of 2023. And investors like you have already made a record number of emergency hardship withdrawals from the 401ks. Now, a stunning survey reveals that over half the Americans making six figures are living paycheck to paycheck, combined with tens of thousands of layoffs in just the last few weeks. It becomes clear that a financial storm is brewing and nobody is safe. But if you think brilliant investors like Robert are letting their money waste away in a 60-40 portfolio, think again. For years, Robert and other experts have been investing millions into low correlation assets that can still climb when the stock market flatlines. And according to a recent Citibank report, of the major asset classes, the lowest correlation belongs to art. In fact, experts say just a 5% portfolio allocation to art can both increase returns and lower volatility. Now, now you can easily get that allocation in your own portfolio without needing millions, thanks to Masterworks, our longtime partner. Their platform lets you invest in shares of paintings by icons like Picasso and Banksy. Every single one of Masterworks' exits to date have delivered positive returns to their investors, with three recent exits delivering 10, 13, and 35% net returns. No wonder over 700,000 users have invested more than half a billion dollars on Masterworks. Offerings have sold out in minutes, but Rich Dad listeners can skip the waitlist by going to masterworks.org slash richdad. 
That's masterworks.art slash rich dad. See important disclosures at masterworks.com slash CD. Today's show is sponsored by Gold Alliance. If you're concerned about high inflation, looming recession, a troubled banking system, or out of control spending in Washington, this is an important message to hear. Because the fact is, during every major crisis in U.S. history, many of those who failed to prepare watch their savings, investments, or retirement funds go down, while many with the foresight to own gold helped preserve their purchasing power. Gold even made some folks richer. Now we're facing several major crises at once, and experts say we may May soon face even more economic trouble. So please don't wait. Learn the simple way you can diversify with gold and put yourself on the road to financial peace of mind, even in uncertain times. The new free 2023 Gold Guide from our friends at Gold Alliance can show you how. Just visit www.freegoldguide.com Robert or call 1-800-473-4585. Republican governor and conservative commentator Mike Huckabee says Gold Alliance is the only only gold provider he recommends to his friends and family. Find out why and visit freegoldguide.com slash Robert or call now at 1-800-473-4585. Feeling powerless over current events and your financial future? Financial freedom is your freedom. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Over 40 million people have taken Robert's advice. Now it's your turn. Attend Robert's free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Don't wait, access is limited. Go to richdadfree.com. That's richdadfree.com. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Today, it's a very important subject called debt, more specifically student loan debt. And if you have young people who are thinking about going to college or young people in college, or you already have student loan debt, then this is a very, 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 very important program. I'm, I'm learning things I did not know. All of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com, so that's where you can go back to it, get your friends, family, you know, your, your student loan participant, listen to the program, discuss it. The discussion part's important because our guest today is Lone, Lane, Lane Schoenberger, and he is with Y Refi, and he's, he's coming up with a way out. Right. Now, I'm not saying it's the best of them, but it's a way out. Right. And I never knew this, and Sarah and I were just talking about it. If I have, a, let's say, a $20 million loan on my apartment house, if I default on it, the bank just takes it, says, buy good riddance, we're not going to give you another loan. I just go get another loan, of course. But if I have a $20,000 student loan, and I die, it follows me into my grave. <laughs> it just keeps going. It, it does. End. I mean, oh my God, what a loan that is. Sign me up. And you're signing up for it when you're like 17, 18, 19 years old. You can't even get a credit card, but you can get one of these things. You can get a driver's license. You can't drink in some states, but you can get a student loan for $20,000. Anyway, so it's a very important subject, especially given the state of the world economy, which is massively in debt right now and we're <clears throat> loading up our kids. This is criminal, and we're giving it to those. So we have no idea what's going on. It's out of control on the debt side and on the content side. <laughs> I can't believe it. We must be on another planet, right, Lane? <laughs> I Sometimes I feel like we are on another planet. And, you know, what's interesting is, is the, the federal government portfolio of student loans, if you die, that one's forgiven at death. But that's just the federal portion. If you have any private, that does follow you all the way to the grave. Oh, geez. Isn't that crazy? And, and you know, the, as a federal government, they just know they're not going to get it. there. You know? But they put this bankruptcy protection wrapper around these student loans. So these borrowers have no way out. Right. So you go into distress on your federal loans. They've got countless programs to help you not be in default. And the reality is, is you're in default. If you're making a five dollar payment on a one hundred thousand dollar loan, because you're in what's called an income driven repayment plan. I'm sorry, you're in default. I mean, they're just, but you're making a $5 payment. So they're not calling you in default. Now on the private student loans, which is where we work. If you go into distress, you you're delinquent, 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 then you're in, dis, you know, then you're in default. What ultimately happens is you had this, this low interest rate variable uh, student loan and 
then you you're, have your late payment fee, late payment fee, late payment fee. Now you're 90 days in and then you're slipping into default. So you're going to get your default interest rate, right? Which could be double digits, uh, likely is double digits. And as you continue down this very slippery slope, now you've got collection fees and attorney's fees and, and these borrowers all of a sudden are north of 20% on their interest rate while they're trying to collect on these kids. You know, they're young adults at this point, right? They're, they've, they've got some college education, maybe a graduate, um, and they, they have no way out because they're, they've gone down this rabbit hole. So what we did was we created a program that allows these distressed borrowers to call us up. We, we carefully and thoroughly underwrite these folks. We want to make sure that they have the ability to pay us, right? And we work with them. And now with that, what, I, what I'm saying is, I'm going to give you some statistics that not are, just, not are just for our portfolio, but are statistics in the industry. So about 70% of these borrowers have a co-borrower. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, someone has signed on the dotted line with that young person when they went through school and they're tearing families apart. Jeez. Right. I mean, they're just ripping these people's lives apart. And, and if you go to our, our investor uh, website, you'll see some testimonials. Those are real borrowers. OK, I did. I had the pleasure of doing the interviews with those folks and they talk about their relationships with their families and what it's done to them. OK, now what we do is after we're you know, through our underwriting process, we do require the borrower to escrow payments with us. OK, equivalent to the payment that we would be uh, requiring of them if, if we were to approve their loan. They do that to prove to us that they have the willingness and ability to pay us back. Okay. Now, during that process, we're working with the existing lender, servicer, collection agency, law firm to acquire that debt and we pay it off. Okay. And wow. it then shows on their credit report as settled. Wow. Now, here's what's, here's what's really cool. Okay. Now, I'm not saying this because it allows them to go out and build a bunch of credit. However, we all know FICO score drives everything. Why refi does not underwrite on FICO. Okay, our average borrower comes to us with a low 500, high 400 FICO score. That's bad, right? Our average co-borrower, low 600, high 500 FICO score. And if you look at their, their credit reports, which we do during loan committee, you see that they generally don't have any other debt, the borrowers, right? It's, it's all student loans and it's just crushing them. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, they've been around for a hot minute, so they've got things. They've got a mortgage and a car and a credit card. That's why they have a little higher FICO score, but it's also been hurt badly because of these student loans, right? What we discovered was once we actually fund a loan, what we've seen is on average a FICO score bump of 125 points in six to nine months for a borrower mm -hmm. and 135 points, 38 points for a co-borrower. Now that's significant because FICO affects everything. And they can buy my apartment right. house. It allows them to, to move forward in a, in a responsible format that they didn't previously have that option, right? So we're helping the borrowers in that sense. So we like to say doing, do you, you as an investor get to do well by doing good. You're helping these people, right? And what we've discovered is when you, when you figured out how to work with these folks, they will actually perform quite well. OK, our default rate is very, very low. And when I say very low, I mean very low, under 2%. Low. So you have an invest right. uh, Again, uh, we don't endorse or endure it. We don't say what a good or a bad is a good or thing. We just peer education. For a person sure. like me who invests constantly, you have a program. I step in and you guys marry my money with some student loan debt to bail the student out. Correct. Or what we do is we put everybody into a portfolio. So no individual investor is investing in any one borrower. You're in the portfolio. So everybody's in there together and all the borrowers are in there together in it. And it really does reduce the risk significantly. And again, we thoroughly underwrite these folks. And like I said, about 70% of them have co-borrowers. So going to our investment, we do offer investors. Now this is under what's called regulation D 506 C. Okay. Okay, so we only allow accredited investors and we do have to verify minimum investments, $50,000. But then we, we, we did something rather unique. And what I mean by that is, is we needed to create something that was easy to explain, easy to understand. It was attractive to the investor as well as the independent registered investment advisor. I spent a career as an investment advisor, so I knew we had to come up with something that was very competitive in the space. What we did was we created a product where as an investor, you pick the duration of your investment from one to five years and you can ladder your investment. You can spread it out. You can do whatever wow. you want. 
We have a, a fixed interest rate. These are all fixed interest rates in what's called a secured collateralized portfolio. It's almost like a bond then. We structured it a lot like a right. bond. I do have to say it out loud. They are promissory right. notes. They're not right. bonds. Right. However, mechanically speaking, we, we, we did structure them to function like when a bond. When you see collateral them and so, all that, it's, oh, this is, this is getting interesting now. Yep. Well, and I'll share this with you later, but I'm going to hold it up just right now. So we have a one, one, you know, this side, one year note is paying 6.25% wow. fixed, which is not too shabby considering CDs where we're at with that stuff. A two year is paying seven, I'm sorry, there is 6.75%. A three year is 7.5%. A four year is at 8.25% wow. and a five year is at 10.25% fixed. Now, again, these are fixed interest rates. We cannot lower them or we have to offer what's called a right to rescind. So they're, they've actually been raised twice since we started this portfolio uh, in 2021. The, the key is it's a minimum investment of $50,000. And then what we did was we said, let's allow the investor, okay, because it's structured a lot like a bond, like we said, you take interest income only monthly, we compound daily and pay monthly. And at the end of your investment term, you get your money back, kind of like a right. bond, right? Or the investor can go into each individual tranche that they have money invested in, and they can turn that interest income on or off, up or down in 1% increments in each tranche as often as monthly. So you have complete and total control over the investment, right? It's very, very flexible. And if you turn it off, if you turn that interest income off, all you're doing is reinvesting or compounding in the tranche that you're in. So if you're in the five-year tranche at 10 and a quarter, and you didn't want or need the income, compound it, let it, let it reinvest 10 and a quarter reinvested over five years. I haven't done the math on it, but I believe it's sitting somewhere around 12 and a half somewhere in there. Don't quote me on that, but it's pretty close, right? So not a bad place to invest. If you've got a retirement account, uh, you can invest through your retirement account, an IRA or non, non-qualified. So individual trust, joint LLCs, et cetera. Yeah. Let me say, I want to say this, I need to say it. We not recommend, Rich Ted does not recommend or endorse or say, we would, we would like to check it out, but I love what you're saying. I hate to say that, but it really sounds good to me. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said it. And I appreciate the fact. I appreciate you cannot endorse, nor am I asking. Yeah. Um, on the other side, because, you know, just to wrap this up, and then we'll talk more about student loans. The, the, the next thing we put in was a liquidity feature. Okay. Because again, we're competing with every investment out there, right? What are you looking for? Everybody wants your money. So... We looked at it and said, let's create a liquidity feature and structure it like a CD. If the client wants out early, penalty is interest only, no attack on principal. Wait, wait, wait. what what was it again? It's just like a CD. If you want out early, penalty is interest only, no attack on principal. What does that mean? Okay. And you, that means I'll give you an example. So clients invested in the one year note and they're six months in and they say, I need out partial or full surrender. The penalty is the interest only. They don't, we'll give them back hundred percent of their principal. Oh, okay. only claim the interest, just like a city. They forfeit the interest. Exactly. <clears throat> well, that's really fair. Exactly. Yep. Then, then we went one step words. further. Say Liquidity again? is one of my favorite words, which is why I like gold and silver. You can get in and right. out of it quickly. Right. So I'll never get out. Right. But anyway. So, you, and you're right. Now we went one step further because what we learned in our previous portfolios, we only had a five year note. Okay. And we had clients saying, well, do you have a shorter option of one, two, three, or four? And the answer was no. Now we have it. So we said, let's create what we call a roll up. Uh, and this allows investors who don't know if they want to be in for a full five years, they can invest in the one, two, three, or four. And at the end of their term, lock in all of that interest. It's now earned or ensconced. And then they roll oh. up to anything above them and finish out that term at that higher interest rate. And if they needed to get out early, the surrender charge is only on what's left, not on the full time. That's, so it's pretty neat and flexible. It's better than compounding. Absolutely. And, and it allows a client to be able to say, I want to start with the one year and move to the two, then move to the three and do it one year at a time. Get to know us a little bit, right? right? So that's that's the investment side. And I, I, I know you're not here to endorse no. my asking. So let's talk more about student loans because here's the big questions that get asked all the time. And the first one is always, well, what if Biden forgives all the student loans? And the answer is, well, we're only doing private distress. They really cannot forgive them. It's not their money to forgive. (laughs) Okay. On the other side of that, most people don't know that the majority of borrowers that have private loans also have federal loans. 
So a forgiveness of the federal loans, while it would be good for our borrowers and for our company, we don't endorse it. I'm just suggesting that we would actually not be hurt. We would be helped because now a borrower doesn't have to make those payments. It would free up cash flow, allowing them to make extra payments on their <laughs> private student loans. So we're not terribly afraid of it, though we don't endorse it or like it. Uh, it, it. We don't see it hurting us or our portfolio or our investors. You know, the next big one, Robert, you'll like this one is, and we get asked this all the time. Well, what happens if Congress changes the bankruptcy laws, right? Because <laughs> they could, they can do anything, it seems. <laughs> so here's, here's the interesting thing, right? Because really what we're doing is we're trying to protect our investors. At the same time, we do have to take that into consideration. I don't see them doing it because $1.5 trillion would immediately go into bankruptcy. <laughs> okay. And this government seems to like indentured servitude. So I don't see that being the case. <laughs> but what happens if they did? Well, our average borrower has, a, has a, about a $40,000 loan. So these are not massive loans. They're $40,000 on average. Our average interest rate that we charge our borrowers is only 3.9% fixed. What? Okay. Uh huh. Our average borrowers only charge 3.9 fixed. And I know the question you're going to ask, so I'll answer it in just a second. The average term on our borrower is only 8.6 years. These are not long-term predatory loans. Now, the question you're going to ask, and all your listeners are going to ask the same question, Lane, you just told us you're paying 10 and a quarter on five-year right. note, and you're going to collect 3.9 on average from your borrower. Math doesn't make sense. Tell me how it works. Well, during our underwriting process, we're working with the existing lender, servicer, collection agency, law firm to negotiate down the price of that okay. debt. We average, we get it in a 35 cent, 40 cent Correct. pocket. That's where we pay it off. We then refinance it to the borrower at 100% plus our 5% refinance charge. Jeez. Okay, so 105. We do not give them a discount on the face value of the loan. People say, well, why don't you give them a discount? You're paying this, we help them out. We are helping them out. If we did give them a discount, they would get hit with what's called cancellation of debt income tax. So we do not reduce the face amount. What we are doing is we're giving them a low fixed interest rate with a custom term that they can actually afford. We're sharing that discount through the low fixed interest rate and custom term. Our payment is usually about 50% of what they are being asked to pay so they can afford it all of a sudden, right? It's pretty fascinating how it you works. Completely restructure the whole loan. loan. Exactly. And if you do it in this way, they don't get hit with cancellation of debt. They get back into the good graces of, of making their payments on time. And lo and behold, their credit improves. They want to get out of this debt. We're not looking for borrowers that are not interested in, in fixing the problem. Those are not our clients. Right. We're focused on people that are looking for a way to get out and didn't have it until now. Right. So from a bankruptcy perspective, we protect our portfolio by having um, about a 70 percent co-borrower rate. We have a low uh, average borrower indebtedness. We underwrite very thoroughly. So in the event of a change in the laws, you know, kid goes into the courtroom and says, Your Honor, I don't want to pay this anymore. And the judge, first thing he's going to say is, well, this isn't a court of I don't want to. So there's the door. <laughs> Let's pretend that he's able to prove that he can no longer afford the payment. Our defense is, of course, well, what's changed? Because you were making these escrow payments. You made these payments in this custom built loan all about you. What's changed? pretend the judge agrees and says, yep, you're right. Mom, dad, you're next. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they're on the loan. So they have to bankrupt too. Again, I don't see them changing the bankruptcy laws. However, we get asked and those are the answers, right? What happens in the event of. So, so this is my final stupid question. So when Biden stands up there, I know it's political theater. When he huh. says, we're talking about student loan debt is 1.78, 1.8 trillion. Mm -hmm. So he's up there and it's all the students get all happy. Parents get happy. What are the odds of that happening? Slim to none. Which is bullshit. Slim to none. Yeah. It, it's, it's all political theater. It's all about getting the votes, trying to convince people to vote for you because there's this, this underlying promise that they're going to do some kind of forgiveness, which is not going to happen. If it does, it'll be minimal at best. It'll be just a little bit to say, I see I did it right. It, not even meaningful. So, and, and frankly, I don't see how they can do it. No. There's, it's just constitutionally not allowed. So, how, how is it constitutionally you know, not allowed? Because who is you, whose money is it originally? Is it the government's money? Well, no, it's tax money. It's all tax revenues. It's confiscation at that point, which is part of the argument, of course, among other things. 
But at the end of the day, you get into a situation where the government is saying, we're going to forgive these loans, but they have zero authority to do so in order to buy boats, <laughs> right? But they're going to continue to lend it to you. Well, Hunter Biden will find a way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's a math, he's a math genius. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why he's on boards of things and such. You know, Lane, we better end it now while we're still laughing. <laughs> because this debt restructuring is not getting any better, is it? No, no, it's not. And, you know, we, we I'll be honest, Robert, one of the reasons we love doing what we do is because we get to help people. Yeah. And and I, I truly do enjoy watching our borrowers succeed and win and get ahead it's fun. And, you know, if I may give a website, can I? Can so I somebody that? like me who wants to be on the investor side, how do we get in touch with you? Well, you can go to invest .com. It's just invest the letter Y R E F Y. R E F Y R E F Y. Y R E F Y.com. Correct. Invest Y R E F Y. .com. And, and poke around in there. Uh, you'll see, you know, Larry Elder endorses us among others. And, and, uh, you know, if you, if you go in and you click on the testimonials, uh, if you want to learn more, you can click on invest now, fill out the little card. It sends it to me. Um, and then, I'll, you know, someone from my team will reach out and answer any questions you have. We pride ourselves on, we don't have to sell. Right. We love to just tell our story. And if you love it, great. And if you don't, that's fine. Thanks for listening to our right. story. Well, you know, you, was it your CFO I talked to the uh, young woman? Yep. That was gone. Uh, yes. D-A-W-N. Yeah. Could you send us our, I want to say thank you to her because I was just sitting there yakking with her and boy, I was so impressed. I said, you're doing what? You're doing what? You're doing what? And so that's why Elaine, you're on the show now because of Don, but she did a fantastic job. I was going, I, I, was, I was almost saying it's too good to be true. So that's why I wanted to get you on the program. And again, I have to deny that I endorse or encourage or say I, I do invest in it. It's just another way of looking at this major problem called jet yep. so Lane, thank yeah and thank you for your time and i really do appreciate the opportunity to again share our story i'm happy to dig deeper with anybody that has questions give us a holler uh we're, we're happy to talk about well, it and if you're in the phoenix area come by and see us we'd love to have people come in and just visit. okay one more time what is your um call sign your website website is uh invest yrefi.com it's invest the letter y r e f as in frank y dot the word is i n v e s t y refi dot correct okay lane thank you very much and uh we come Pleasure. we'll be right back thank you again welcome back robert kiyosaki the rich dad radio show the good news and bad news about money and today was actually some good news about this student loan crisis. I didn't know it was so bad as it is. And I started a book on it. I think I'll have to finish it now. It's about how difference between Marxist, capitalists, and socialists. And a Marxist will actually do everything possible to keep you poor. And they're considered guys like Obama and all that. These guys put this student loan debt package together and it's ripping off a whole generation, I mean, millions of people, $1.8 trillion in student loan debt that you can't pay off. I mean, how would anybody, they can't even get a credit card, but or whatever, how can they put a young person that much in debt for the rest of their life? And according to Lane Schoenberger, it follows them into the grave and your parents. I mean, this is criminal what they're doing. So that's the Obama administration, which is all those academic elite woke specialists. Anyway, Sarah, what'd you think? No, I thought this was an excellent show. Um, you know, because I, I feel like a lot of our listeners and our customers who are trying to learn about financial freedom, for them, it's a mental block. How can you reach financial freedom if you have this $100,000 loan that's following you well mm. after, you know, you've finished school? Um, so I thought it was incredibly informative. One, that there are options, right? So right. It, it doesn't have to be so bad. And we're not saying why refi is the answer for you, because um, it may not. They do their due diligence and underwriting for each of uh, their customers. But they I have to make money too. Exactly. And I, but I do, I, I did really appreciate that he approaches it that way that they're, they're, they, you know, the number one thing that you guys talk about when starting a business is find, solve a problem. Yeah. And they found a business that solves a major problem that Americans are facing. And, and I the problem was, was solved before until Obama stepped in and made it worse. Right, right. That's, that's my old bitch. <laughs> well, and he, he said that too. Was it that 
and maybe I'll have to go back and listen, but that the student loan debt because of interest had doubled in the last 12 months. Yes. I mean, and, that's, de and defaults. And defaults. That was, in, that's insanity to me. Absolute yep. insanity. We're going broke so fast. And because many of these loans mirror the interest rates, the federal government interest rates, right? right. I mean, it, it, and we know they're at not all time highs, but highs that we've seen in the last 15 years. Um, how can you ever get from underneath that? If you weren't able to get it, you know, at the 2.75 or whatever, you're never, it, it's just a pro major growing problem. So loved his insights, loved his knowledge. Um, you can tell that they are really into how this impacts Americans and, and what happens when you get out from underneath that debt, the freedom that it allows you then to become financial free. You can actually start doing things that you were never able to do before. Right. And what they're able to do, because, you know, you look at the cash flow quadrant, ES, B, and I, their I's, their insiders. He goes into a bank, let's say you owe $100,000. <clears> the way they make their money, they'll negotiate your loan down to maybe 25000 mm -hmm. You and I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But because that's their business, they go and say, look, you know, either you deal with us or you can deal with this person who's never going to pay you. Yep. And so they say, okay, we'll take a lump sum now. Yep. So they're out. But then he, he then he brings in investors like myself to help the problem out. So it's a win, win, win all around. And I, I'm again, I'm not endorsing it. I have no proof it works or anything. I never talked to any of the customers. I was just talking to his CFO. And I was impressed when she was telling me, oh, you guys do that, you do this, you do that. Because it's a major problem. Yep. We're putting our younger people in debt so young, they have no chance of, no chance for the future. Mm -hmm. So it was really good and good news. I'm really, really happy with it. So once again, it's Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Eye Radio Show. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for everybody for listening. And thanks to Lane Schoenberger. Um, invest, Y-R-E-F-Y, -E Y-R-E-F-Y. Thank you very much. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.